This is a gentleman named John Norris, and he started out his career as a uh, game warden, mm -hmm. a guy who like checks fishing licenses and stuff. And along the way, he discovered that because of the um, legalization of marijuana in California, they decriminalize it to the point where growing it is a misdemeanor. And so people are growing it on federal land, on state land. Mm -hmm. And so these uh, state forests and federal forests in California are filled with cartels. They're, they're growing marijuana. So he had to form a tactical unit to combat these cartels. So they're, you know, they're, they're wearing tactical gear. And go, this guy was a game warden. And now they've got, you know, Belgian Malamois and fucking machine guns. And they're going in there and they're fighting off cartels and yeah. and he wrote this book called hidden wars it's fucking crazy yeah, there's rarely a silver bullet unfortunately but this is the problem that you have when you have it illegal i mean this is literally what propped up organized crime during the prohibition this is what what funded the mafia they ran booze illegally because it was illegal well and so criminals are going to be in charge of things that there's a demand for when there's a, an enormous economic incentive. I, I think the mafia is a great example for why you shouldn't look for the silver bullet. Because yes, that in the 1920s during Prohibition was one of the big reasons it got going. But the mafia didn't waste any time in diversifying and neither of the cartels. So one of the many problems in Mexico today is that the cartels have diversified. They've gotten into cargo theft and kidnapping and avocados and limes and real estate and local government. And criminality is always going to exist. Now, the attractiveness of gutting them of some of their primary income, should we look at that? Of course. But it's not so simple as removing one and it just all stops. Because of the limes and avocados right. and all these other things. that Because, I mean, these are things that are obviously legal. Right. But the cartels have found a way to take it over and make it their own. But isn't that the problem was initially because of illegal drugs. So that's where they got their enormous resources. Well, and I would then say that allowed them to expand into other semi-legal or legal. I'd say the problem was lack of rule of law. And that goes to Chicago as well. Mm -hmm. And the way we ultimately got past that is after Prohibition ended, it still took 20 to 30 years to kind of ground down the mob. And we welcomed them into politics to normalize it. Brr. So careful what you wish for. <laughs> so do you anticipate that happening with Mexico? Uh, Mexico is, to be perfectly honest, really early in this process. Uh, the challenge we're seeing in Mexico right now is that the... Uh, air quotes, good cartel, the one that saw drugs as a business, is being broken up. If you remember El Chapo. That's the good cartel? Yeah. yeah. Remember El Chapo, Sinaloa cartel? Yeah. He thought of himself as a Korean conglomerate president. So it's like, we, we, we smuggle drugs. That's our business. You don't mess with things that mess with the business. So you don't trip the old lady. You don't steal her purse. You don't shoot at the cops. These are people who live where we operate. We want them to be on our side. So maybe even throw a party every once in a while. Uh, you focus on the business. We got El Chapo. We removed him from circulation. Uh, the guy who died or got captured yesterday was his son, one of the Los Chapitos. And uh, his cartel, as a result, is fracturing because his leadership's gone. The replacement cartel is Jalisco New Generation. They're led by a former Mexican uh, military officer who thinks that rather than don't shit where you sleep so that the people on your side... Whenever you move into a town, you shoot it up. You do kick over the old lady. You do take her purse. You make the people scared of you. That's the point of this. Drug running is a side gig. We are here to be powerful. And drug running is just one of the ways we make that happen. And he has taken the fight to every cartel and the Mexican government. And they're in the process of trying to break into the United States. Break in in what Economically? Yeah. El Chapo and the Sinaloa became the largest drug trafficking organization in America under the Obama administration. And one of the reasons our birth rate went down so far so fast is they basically either co-opted or killed uh, American gangs. So they killed the people who were doing the killing. Not a lot of Americans got killed after that. All of the other cartels control the access points to the United States, but Jalisco New Generation now is challenging every single one of them trying to break through. And if they do, and they bring their business acumen, if you will, north of the border, they're going to start 
killing white chicks named Sheila in Phoenix. And then we're going to have a very different conversation in this country about the drug war and about trade with Mexico. So what, what it, when you say that they've killed the gangs, like what, in what way? Because that is an interesting thing that you don't hear a lot about American gangs anymore. Well, that's because they're not there to the same degree. So the Sinaloa, they, they co-opted the Hispanic gangs, especially the Mexican gangs, because there wasn't a language barrier there. Uh, and they really targeted and gutted a lot of the African-American gangs. They took over drug smuggling and distribution from them to deny them income. And then they just shot a lot of people. And when did this take place? That happened during the, the 2000s. It was pretty much completed by the time we got to 2013. But we weren't really kind of, this This narrative didn't really go around. This is not something that I've heard before. Well, yeah, look at the murder. It, it's making yeah. sense yeah, when look you're at saying the, it. Look at the violent crime rates in the United States. They've been trending down really significantly since about 2004. And the drop from 2004 to roughly 2014 was amazing. That's largely Sinaloa. So they have silently sort of invaded and taken mm -hmm. over the distribution and taken over the gang activities. Right. And this is El Chapo's cartel that is now getting broken up. And as soon as you have more players, more violence is going to happen, especially against one another. And that's one of the reasons that the murder rate in Mexico has skyrocketed in the last three years. Do you know who um, Ed Calderon, do you know, have you ever followed Ed Manifesto on I Instagram? He's, uh, he used to work for the government in Mexico and, you know, to, to fight off the cartels. And now he's made his way to America and he just does a great job of highlighting all this stuff. But one of the things he was showing is they were using 50 caliber rifles to try to shoot down planes yesterday. Yeah. Have you seen that? I have. I mean, what the fuck is going on over there? I mean, it, it seems like we concentrate so much on these conflicts that are happening all around the world, and there's a massive one mm -hmm. happening in a place where we could walk to. Yeah, it's the disintegration of the Sinaloa cartel. So uh, back in 2019, the, the Los Chapitos, I can't remember his name. I keep wanting to say Octavia, and that's not it because that's a girl's name. Anyway, it begins with an O. Uh, he was captured in 2019, and they weren't able to get him out of town fast enough. So all of his homies basically got together with assault weapons and descended upon the police units that did it, and they were forced to let the guy go. Yeah, I remember that. This time, they were able to get him to the airport fast enough, and he's already in Mexico City. So there was a clash, but not nearly to the degree that we had so a couple years is, back. 